Do we get started? Yeah. Sure. Welcome to Elders Rising, episode 21. Today we have a guest, John. Do you, would you like to introduce yourself, John? Yeah. Well, I am not from Utah. <laughs> Ridgey from Idaho, but come down here after graduated from college and got stuck. So here we are. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so what brought you down? Uh, I just got to, I could not find any work anywhere up in Idaho and uh, got hired on part-time down to uh, the Hiram Dam Park over there. That lasted for the summer and then I just found out I had to find a real job and started working for Anderson Lumber for, worked for them for two or three years and got on out to what used to be called Morton. Now auto leave. Bounced around here and there in a couple places, but I ended up at the uh, uh, federal building down in Ogden as armed security down there. Been there for uh, you know just just crossed eight years. So I was gonna say it's been getting close to a decade because you went there after. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, right after getting light, laid off after fire call. And One of the things that um. So the first time I met John, he was he taught a self-defense class, and he he um, definitely helped me in just personal protection, specifically with a pistol. And the 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 man knows his stuff in that in that regards. That he's a man of his domain. Yeah, so you might want to insert that caveat in there. To <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> anything else? Uh... I don't know much, but I know my way around a rifle. So, <laughs> to each their own. But I can kind of weld. So, I am really JB good at weld? <laughs> and I'm really good at running my melt. No, you have to mix the JB weld. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we were talking, before we got started, we were talking a little bit about some of the stuff that's going on. Um, and some of the stuff we'll probably get into today. But one of the big ones that happened just this week was was Rush Limbaugh. He passed away. Was that on the 17th, right? Uh, I believe so, yes. That's my birthday, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> His birthday, too. Thanks, Mitch. It's not about you. It's not bullshit. <laughs> um, but, obviously, obviously... Um, he, he did a lot of really good stuff for, for our country. He did a lot of really good stuff for the, the public attitudes and the public... Um, the dissemination of information. Yeah, awareness, yeah. really. Yeah. What, um, what, do you think, what do you guys think was most impactful that he did that personally impacted you guys? I don't know. Did you listen to him much, Mitch? I don't know. Um, I haven't talked to you specifically about him. He used him. to. Uh, when I was working for my cousins and we were out of town, we were in the trucks a lot. We'd listen to Glenn and Rush and Sean Hannity and, and them on talk radio as we're driving around. But, you know, I wouldn't say that Rush really had an impact on my life. That I, 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 I kind of relate to that because that, there was a summer or two where I, I did the same and the thing that I guess the thing that I took away from listening to Rush, I always liked Rush because he was he he typically fight a little more. He wasn't he wasn't so um, non confrontational, and that was I thought that was refreshing. I thought that was that was neat to hear, especially in a culture in a community uh, that's that's so focused on come here, dog. So focused on being like don't rock the bow or like don't don't cause problems but be nice and stuff and, and that's something that I really I really resonated with is, is you know sometimes it's good to, to call someone a feminazi well and therein lies the problem with the Republican Party um, that's always don't rock the boat don't really stand and fight or anything like that it's always let's just <clears throat> let's just get to the next election cycle blah 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 and then when they do get to the next election cycle or get to wherever point they predetermined, whatever, they, they, back don't, off. they don't do anything. Yeah. It's all the about... The Republican Party really has nothing to offer other than saying we're not them. Yep. 
then that's literally it. We can lose gracefully. That's their mantra. We can lose gracefully. Seems well, to be. how many how many things have been passed that were wrong that everybody knows were wrong, and instead of when the time comes repealing those things and trying to force the government back on the path that it should be on, but how many times have they done that? Never once. Well, a perfect example is in my in my opinion is that when they had the time, or when they had the opportunity, when Trump first came on board to get rid of Obamacare, and they didn't. I, I thought of that exact same thing. They kept they kept saying, well, repeal and replace, and I'm like, no, don't, don't replace, just repeal, get rid of it. Let the market make those decisions. You put some, you put some uh, guidelines in there as far as, um, pre-existing conditions or whatever, that, that, that sort of thing, but let the market do it. Let the market instead determine of, it? Instead of the, the government, I mean, I have, I don't know how many times I've read through the Constitution. Um, never once have I found anywhere that they have the authority to dictate to us uh, what we do and, and don't do education-wise or healthcare-wise or energy-wise. Um, they, they kind of take it upon themselves, well, that's promoting the general welfare. No, it really isn't. That's not your place to, to, to mess between me and my doctor. Um, but it didn't, I, never heard, I never heard a single time any public figure say just repeal. It was all repeal and replace, you know, give us something, give us Obamacare light. Well, that was, that was Romney. <laughs> why, why, why would we need more of it? But uh, uh, you, you never heard you never heard anybody say that. Um, Rush, in my mind, was one of these guys that he, he validated what I thought. He he said the same things that I was thinking, and uh, that uh, for me was was a big deal. And I, I I thought, okay, well, I'm not I'm not alone in this. Then I you know I'm not so far off base that you know <laughs> everybody's going to think I'm a absolute wacko but uh, like, I, like I said earlier he he and he and Paul Harvey are what I remember as 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 growing up listening to and having having an effect on, on how I think and feel because all of a sudden I'm not I'm not alone in in those thoughts and feelings that right there what you said I'm not alone <laughs> is such a big important part of it um it makes me think of like the the one of the biggest problems on the right is people feeling like they are alone people feeling like they're, like they're isolated the one the main reason why we do this this podcast is one we feel like there's 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 important things to say that people need to hear but also so that people don't feel alone there's there's not a lot of people that that listen but the people that listen know that they're not on an island. They know that hey, these ideas that, that I'm having are not just. I'm not the only. I'm not the weirdo. I, I don't have to be quiet and silent. It, there, there, there's more than that. And it's it's interesting. The the media went so hard at Trump um, about Charlottesville, about Charlottesville. And and one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is, do you know the mantra of the Charlottesville? Why they were getting together? It was they had a. It was a freedom a free speech rally. And it was called Unite the Right. They wanted to unite different culture, uh, different parts of the right. And yeah, there were bad people there, but there were a lot of, like Trump said, oh, there were, there were good people on both sides. And they're like, Trump got, Trump got um, blasted for that. But the reason the media went so hard after it is because they are doing everything they can to make sure the right doesn't feel united. Yeah. So that we don't feel, like, so we do feel isolated and alone because that's one of their strongest tools against us is just our minds. That's it. Well, they've done a good job at it, too. Mm-hmm. Well, when they're basically the ones in control of the mass media, uh, the the story that they put out there is going to be basically the only story that's out there. Yep. Because the rest of us don't have access to that kind of equipment and, and whatnot. And so um, I, I thought it was I thought it was interesting this last little while how they're they're <coughs> screaming and hollering about Trump <laughs> trying to impeach him. Well, they did. They successfully impeached him, but they didn't get him kicked out, obviously, because he was already out of office. 
Well, you can only impeach someone who's in office, so they, they proved that he didn't actually leave, right? Well, what's funny, what's funny about that whole thing Just is there was... Oh, Romney had posted something on Facebook. I don't remember what he said. <clears throat> but everybody was commenting on there, and people were congratulating him on voting his conscience and whatever. And <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, you people... Do you not realize that his job is to not vote his conscience? His job is to vote as he's told. Represent his job us. To do, his not job is to himself. do as he's told. Yep. And they said, no, you're supposed to vote for somebody whose conscience represents yours. No, you're supposed to, you know, um, have conversations with your representatives. You're supposed to call, um, write, email. You're supposed to do those things and let them know where you stand on the issue so they know where to vote. He is your voice back there is what it's supposed to be. Exactly. And <clears throat> so I was saying that and this other lady commented on their something on the on the impeachment. And so I said, well, according to um, the Constitution, you know, uh, an impeachment is only to remove somebody from office. Yep. That's all it's for. You remove somebody from office and that person no longer holds office then, I mean, it's unconstitutional. But not only that, <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I, I laid it out there and I said to this lady, I said, besides that, Article 1, Section 3 of the United States Constitution says that the Chief Justice shall preside. And, and he did. Presidential impeachment, yep. Some other lady came on and, and he said, out. Yeah, some other lady came on and said, it doesn't say that, that's a lie. <laughs> so I went and I looked it up and I, I copied and pasted the, the section where it's talking about that and I posted it on there and she didn't say a word. Yeah. Yep. But it's, you know, it's one of those things you always look at. It. People are always adding or taking away from what they think is in the Constitution because nobody's they ever actually read it anymore. Yeah. Ever read it. Mm-hmm. You know, my daughter, <clears throat> she's 11 and we read the Constitution together, and I explain it to her, and ask her what she thinks it means, and, you know, so I'm trying to teach um, the next generation about what's in there, why it's important, how it's important, how it applies to everything, but the other, the other problem that we have with people not knowing what's in the Constitution is the other people who've read it, but don't know how to, uh, I guess interpret it would be the best way to say it. And it's not even interpreted. They've, yeah. they've read it, but they don't under. They're misinterpreting it because it's not yes. a difficult ling- It's not a difficult document. Yes. But they're not taking in t- taking it in the context from where it was written by people who refused to be ruled by people who had taken on, you know, the greatest empire the world had ever seen at that point. Mm-hmm. And they refused to be ruled. They wanted to be left alone. And that's what the entire thing was all about. And people don't look at it that way. No. No, it uh, <clears throat> it came from uh, decades and centuries of <sighs> tyranny. There's no, other way, there's no other word for it. When, when the king could do pretty much whatever he wanted to do. Um... That's kind of a segue into what we were talking about to discuss on uh, the, everybody knows the First Amendment, you know, your right to uh, free speech and assembly and uh, approach the government for redress of grievances, uh, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, those kinds of things. Um, everybody knows the, the Second Amendment, or at least they claim to. <laughs> Third Amendment has to do with uh, quartering of troops in time of peace and war. And they had just come, 1765, Parliament in London had passed on the colonies the cost of quartering troops in the colonies because the Crown could not afford it. And so they were literally given almost carte blanche to do whatever they wanted to once they got here. We were we were forced to feed them, house them, transport them, all those kinds of things, and uh, people finally got got fed up with it. Um, and 
it, the, the things that they did, the re, one of the reasons that for the Fourth Amendment, right afterwards, you know, talking about uh, search and seizure and uh, privacy and those kinds of things, was that all of a sudden the, the soldiers of the Crown could go and do just about anything with impunity. So, um, because the, the colonists couldn't stand up to them. They, did, they didn't have a voice. You're saying, and I didn't realize, I didn't know this about the, um, about the, the crown not having the funds to, to I didn't know that was one of the motivations. Oh, well, yeah. they had a, they had a, they had an empire that literally wrapped around the world. The sun never set on the British Empire. India, Australia, Canada, and the, the, the states. Um, obviously the, the home islands, but you got South Africa, you got other places in, in Africa that the, the British were... Uh, British East Indies and all this kind of stuff. I mean, they, they, they covered a lot of ground. It, it just makes and me think of, though... It takes a lot of money to run an empire that size. You look at today what we've got, and you look at the um, the debt that we're accumulating and how we're handling it, and y eventually you're going to have to pay the piper. That's, no, that's... we just print more. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the problem with, with moving off the gold standard was we... We have no backing for our money. Exactly. We and so it is. Yeah, just, we did talk about fiat currency last week. Literally just paper. So you know, fancy paper, but it's just paper. <laughs> it's green. Yeah. Um, since we're here, should we just read the third and fourth? Yeah, I think so. I almost washed my little pocket constitution. I, I have a couple light. times. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got a little black one like that. Yeah. That I got for that I got for us, and I almost washed it last night. And uh, I pulled it out and set it off to the side, and I left it at home. <laughs> so I got one of my giveaways. <coughs> um. So, go ahead, Mitch. Um, Amendment three: No, no soldier shall, in time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war but in a manner to be prescribed by law. So we just partially covered this. So what would, um, in a time of war, in a manner to be prescribed by law be? To my knowledge, they haven't, they haven't made that law. Um, because we haven't, had, we haven't had that sort of thing. That was one of the things that I, I find funny that... that uh, you know, the, the Democrats have done nothing but disparage the military and law enforcement for the last several years. And yet when they need them, all of a sudden then they, they, they start calling the states to send the National Guard. So the states send the National Guard to protect the inauguration. And when uh, the home states started seeing how the vets were being, or the, sorry, the National Guard was being treated, uh, several of the states recalled their, their troops. But... <laughs> I'll be danged if the uh, feds decided they don't. They, they they like having that protection there, so I, they've extended the stays. But they did not include a single provision of how to house them, how to feed them, uh, any of those kinds of things. Plus, how to get them home when they when the time came. I saw them sleeping in garages and stuff like that. What other uh, is that? What you're talking about? Or is there anything else that I? Well. It, that was one of the things that, that they couldn't they couldn't just go and uh, commandeer housing mm -hmm. or a hotel or hotel or you know or, or anything like that. They 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 were basically left to uh, more or less fend for themselves, and and that was the problem that we had with the British was that they they had the permission of the crown to do whatever it was they had to do, and and we as colonists really didn't have a voice in, in either uh, its enactment or uh, the debate be prior to. And so we basically had to put up with whatever they were going to do. And they they murdered, they raped, they, they, they stole, uh, like I say, almost with impunity. And um, we had very, very few options left to us. Um, and these things just, they, that was one more, one more straw uh, on the camel's back. Well, Until think, we finally decided we had enough. I think, if I remember correctly, that was also a big part um, of the War of Independence. Was like, like you said, it was just another straw. But I mean, they're having 
the ability to impact you and, you know, interfere with your private life. Yep. And that would piss me off. Well, you know, it didn't, it didn't happen all of a sudden. We didn't just finally say, okay, that's it. You yeah. read the declaration, that's a long list. That's a lot of crap we put up with for a lot of years before we finally said, okay, enough is enough is enough. And uh, so that, you know, that sort of thing is not something that you undertake lightly and, and people will, will put up with a lot before they, they finally decide to take it into their own hands to change things. That's why, that's, that's, <laughs> that's exactly why we have the amendments. That's exactly why we have some of the provisions that we've got in not only the uh, the Constitution but in the amendments was that we had all just gone through. <laughs> that happens a lot. Mostly we had all just gone through um, <laughs> happening to Mitch. all this crap that, that the, the British had foisted on us. And uh, before we finally decided that, okay, it's we've, we've reached the tipping point, so to speak. So, now, one of the things that you said there was we put up with a lot there's there's a video that i very much liked have you seen the the it's an old movie um called office space we <laughs> talk talked about this movie so much you've never watched the thing that i told you there's i have a, seen office space Dick. yeah that's not office space the thing that i'm talking about it, it's from that movie but there's a guy that um did you does, send it to me yes i sent it to you i've sent it to you a few times but it's long it's like 45 minutes long I there's do a, guy, a terrible job of watching videos. There's, there's this guy, his name's Devin Stack. He's the guy that wrote The Day of the Rope. Oh, I love Devin Stack. Yeah, he, he's, he, he's, his YouTube is blackpilled, which I'm pretty sure that's been banned. And so and I think he's on um, on BitChute and on different places. But he goes through and does, he does analysis over vi- vi- movies. But he anal- he did an analysis on um, on this, this show called uh, Office Space. That's what you were talking about earlier. <laughs> and and he um, one of the things he points out is in specifically the different ways that the, some of the different um, the different men in that show react to the conflict. And and specifically one of the reasons why that movie um, had such a had such like a cult following is because it got the culture really right. And with with like Anglo-Saxon men, they. Their reactions are they, they jump to a an extreme ex, uh, extreme response, and they simply they, they already know the, the the worst case the nuclear option, and it's their restraint that keeps them from doing it, and they, you push them long enough, and and he basically says they're nice until they're not, yeah, and like that's that's just the way that it is. We're, we're, the the culture that is in America for the for the, as a nation is we are nice until we're not and when we're not you don't like to see us that's why the whole sleeping giant is a thing that's why the whole like we 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 don't when we do have to do something we make sure that it, it like we, you don't start a fight but you're definitely going to end it you know and that's something that um that the crown found out and that, that's where i was getting at is like um we we really do we we have culturally and, and cultures react differently you know and that's 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 something that, that that's very true is like they just react differently but one of the things that the elites don't understand about the american um culture the just the the root culture is that we're we're nice and we're placid until we're not and it's not because we don't see it's because our restraint keeps us and we give the benefit of the doubt until you give us no other option and then we solve the problem yeah. well do you, either you two ever remember what my three words of advice I share are or, yeah not three words of advice but my three rules of advice uh-uh. don't eat yellow snow don't eat yellow snow <laughs> brown snow is iffy <laughs> no um, never never anger a patient man yeah. never force a peaceful man to violence and when you need a gun you need it right damn now <laughs> Yeah, beware of the fury of a patient man. So, and uh, what was the other one that uh, there's a difference between peaceful and and impotent? It, well, yeah. I mean, a, a peaceful man is one who is capable, <laughs> when pushed to the limit or past his limit, he is capable of great violence. That's not the guy you want to meet. Yeah. And uh, uh, so it's something that. 
I, I, I think our elected representatives have a tendency to forget. Yeah. And we just reminded them not too long ago. Uh, but they have obviously forgotten um, well. that, uh, you know, we are, we are a, a peaceful country and we are a good people. Um, but that only goes so far. You know, um, you, uh, you, you hit the right trigger and get out of the way because all hell is about to break loose. Well, it's you like know? I always warn people because, you know, and we see this every, you know, four to eight years um, when the entire government swings either Democrat or Republican and everything like that. And Republicans are passing bills that everybody's, oh, okay, with well, because that goes after the people who aren't me. And then when the pendulum ultimately swings back the other way, they're like, they can't do that. It's like, well, they're doing the exact same thing. It's just affecting you now. Yep. So, but that's also the thing that I think the government doesn't realize. All our representatives, they view themselves as elite, and we, we all know that, as they view themselves as a ruling class. But they, too, they don't realize that that pendulum is eventually going to swing back the other way. And, you know, one thing that I've, that I've said before, and I've, I've said to a few people, and, you know, Joe Biden says that he thinks that former military and law enforcement are promoting white supremacy and all this other stupid shit. It was just like, just, it just frustrates me, you know, because they, our generation of veterans, they sent to Iraq and Afghanistan for, they told us it was, you know, for weapons of mass destruction and for um, spreading democracy. And we believe that we were trying to help them and trying to do the right thing and whatnot. And ultimately, I think most of us have found out that we've been lied to. But, you know, at one point you're their golden child because you're doing what they want. And ultimately when we realize that we're being slighted, that they're not taking care of us like they promised, that we that we sacrificed all this other stuff and we're being neglected and abused, you know, and we're upset about it, they turn on us because, well, they betrayed us so they can't trust us. So naturally they're going to hate us and turn us into the bad guys. Well, but it, that's just the thing. Betrayal? What in, in the military to, you know, us guys that are just, you know, the frontline guys, everything is about loyalty. you got your guys, you know you can't count on the army, you know you can't count on DC, you can't, you can't count on anybody except for the guys to your yeah, left and your right. Yeah. Loyalty is everything to us. And betrayal is very real, and we don't like it. So, <coughs> nobody should be surprised when eventually betrayal becomes full circle. That's that's the thing. Is like you say that they 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 hate you, but really it's they're scared of you because you know the secrets in the sense of like you see that they're not you, you're not you're not a pawn, and and they know that you're. It's like it's like a, someone who beats their dog. And then all of a sudden their dog's off the chain. It's like, oh crap, what do I do? Uh oh. Yep. Yeah. That that's exactly what it is. I don't know if you're calling us all bitches, but <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it's I, I, I look at it my, my I'll family. Say it if you want. <laughs> my family. We uh, we just started uh, in on the Book of Mormon again as a family. Every night and we just read we just came across a Part in uh, Second Nephi, chapter one, I believe it's verse twenty-six, where Lehi is talking to Laman and Lemuel about how they were whining and complaining because Nephi was speaking to them with sharpness and anger. And when uh, he says, "No, that 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 sharpness was the truth. That anger was was the truth." And you interpreted it as you know, he was being mean to me or you know those kinds of things when in fact what he was really doing was he was telling you the truth and you didn't want to hear the truth nobody ever wants to hear the truth no 
That's no. why you're always considered an asshole because you speak the truth. <laughs> That's why we don't have many, many users. As you say, few things, few things will get you in trouble faster than yes. telling somebody the truth. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> that is. Just that's the way it is. That is also very true. And, uh, yes. uh, it, and, and few things will get you killed faster than telling the truth, too. You know, well, you got to, we, how many how many movies? When when's the last time you watched? Uh, what was it? Uh, Silkwood. 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 Never heard of it. Share. Or Aaron Brockovich. Nope. No. Um, those kinds of things that that uh, you know when you when you're speaking truth to power, power does not like it. Hold this. And when they uh, when they finally get to the point that they uh, they feel threatened, then that's when. That's when the bodies start disappearing. Yeah. Well, and if we look at the way that things are going right now, the the government is, we're currently watching them use Hitler's playbook. And before Hitler used it, the Bolsheviks used it. Yep. So we're just watching the same thing be played out again, but people don't either don't realize it or they're not willing to admit it. Well, I, the, the problem I see in our in our uh, society right now is that as long as we got the Kardashians, everything's cool. As long we're, as they keep us comfortable. We've we've got you know the distractions that keep us from looking and paying attention to what's really going on. Um, it worked in Rome. Yeah. Well, well, you know, we used to be. We used to be. I grew up watching uh, Walter Cronkite Why do you think on the news at night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> To, and to until make the men placid. Un- until I mean, he was he was literally called the most trusted man in America, and it wasn't until several years after he had retired that anybody knew what his political leanings were because he never let on. He was reporting the news as it happened. He was not trying to make the news. He was not trying to interpret the news. He was simply telling you what was going on. And uh, that's that's not to the, I I don't know that you can find anywhere now that you can get an honest assessment of. Of what's going on, rather they're all commentators now. They're all opinion, opinion makers, rather than just simply telling you what's going on. You got to tell people what to think. <clears throat> In so, large measure, yes. Um, I know you've been to D.C. Have you been back to D.C.? No. I mean, I've landed at the airport a couple of times, but that's as close <laughs> as I got. When you say you've been to D.C., I literally drove by the White House. So you didn't at like. <laughs> 10 30 or 11 at night and i was actually i drove down the wrong road and i kind of got scared <laughs> yeah that's not a place you'd want to get lost it was night. pretty interesting like people started approaching the car stuff like that <laughs> and you can't even have a gun you can't have a gun that thing says free society like yeah. not being able to have yeah. a gun um no so did you go did you you didn't stop and look at anything were you? Okay. no so i went with my mom last year um, to do wreaths across America where we lay the wreaths at the wreaths out at Arlington and we we took a, a long weekend we went left on like Wednesday and came back on a sorry I remember you mentioning you might want that oh you got more of those okay, oh. okay. Um, <laughs> and we, we went to the Holocaust Museum and I mean we didn't have have much of a chance there to really take everything in because they were they were closing early for something but uh, you know I was I was going through there with my mom and we're looking at all this stuff realizing that we're watching all these things play out in front of us right now. and you know we I think everybody knows that government has a tendency to you know um, give itself more power and and everything, but you know the Jews couldn't fight back because they didn't have guns and didn't have any way to do it. Yeah, and you know they turned they turned everybody against their neighbors, and which is why that lady got fired from Star Wars because she called it out. Yeah. But uh, called it out truthfully rather yeah. than trying to make us look like that's so what they, we were doing. They try to hide history, and you ask a lot of kids now. You know about Hitler's rise, rise to power, and and all that. I mean, they have no idea. They have no idea of what led it, led up to it. Um, 
you know, and a lot of the finer details. Well, I guess I can't really call them finer details, but you know, but they don't they don't know what they're the not, lead up was, they're you not know, taught the strategies, anymore. anything yeah. like that. And what happens if you don't know history? Well, perfect example I think is is uh, I I still have some fairly strong opinions on on what happened on January sixth. Um, you could almost call that the Reichstag fire. Yeah. You know, where it was the uh, ruling class set the set the fire and then they blamed the the uh, communists. Blamed the other side. They blamed and, the communists, didn't they? Yeah. Well they, they blamed the Poles for it. Oh. And then they uh, they took the opportunity, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste and they uh, were able to consolidate and, and broaden their power. And I, that, in my opinion, that's exactly what's going on back there. I think it was a. Uh, I think there was some uh, some things there that, that when we finally do find out what actually happened, people will be highly upset um, because it will go to show that that the powers that be, meaning the Democrats right now, are complicit in exactly what happened because it was it was known about for weeks. It was not a spontaneous. Uh, event any more than Benghazi was a spontaneous event and uh, they don't like people mentioning those things because it it uh, calls into question the uh, the powers that be and you have to wonder what is really going on back there that's the thing though is like our founding fathers they made it they, they made it so clear in the Constitution that the federal government was meant to be a small organization. It's meant to be small. And the reason for that, that I can, the way I understand it, is regardless of who's in power, when it doesn't have a vast infrastructure, a vast um, machine, it can't screw over the, na the general citizen. Yep. If a small government doesn't have the power to ruin everybody's life. And then it doesn't matter who plays their games over the over who has the pissing match of oh I'm in charge this week no I'm in charge this week the government leaves you alone and that lets the people be strong we the people and that's where that's where the authority for the government comes from from the consent of the government exactly yep. well and what you know what did what did the founders say what was the entire reason behind not just the Declaration of Independence, but the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the entire, you know, um, reason for creating this nation. That man can and should govern himself. Yep. Are we governing ourselves right now? Because I don't feel like I have a whole hell of a lot of control in my life. That video you sent me with the, with that showed that 30% of uh, bills and stuff that are passed popularity doesn't matter on how popular it is with the the 90 percent yeah 90 some odd percent um bills that have a hundred percent um approval rating still only have a 30 percent chance of of being passed and bills that have a zero percent approval rating also have a 30 percent chance of being passed <laughs> it, it it literally it and that's for the top that's for the t um, the bottom the bottom 90% of um, uh, wealth wise the bottom 90% of Americans for the top 10% the the bills that are 100% approval rating for the top 10% have close to a 60% um, chance of being passed and bills that have a 0% uh, approval rating for that top 10% they have a 0% chance of being passed which means the rich can block whatever they don't like and they get over half of what they do like. The average American, 90% under that, it doesn't matter what their opinion is. It has no reflection nope. on Congress and what the bills are passed. And so that shows that, that I mean, this these last few, the last two years have shown very clear to, to, the norm, to the normal person, the normal citizen, that our institutions are no longer functioning the way that they were intended. We're losing, we're losing trust in our institutions. Like you mentioned, the vote is highly suspect. The, okay, they took it to court. What did the courts do? Oh, we're not going to see that. There's, it was too late. 
Okay, so they, they took the next one to court when they when they're having the re um, the reevaluation or whatever. Oh, it's too early. We can't look at that now. They never once looked at any of the evidence. They never looked at anything. They didn't judge on anything. It was simply it got thrown out on technicalities, which shows to the American people that it's not they're not doing their jobs. No. And so not only did it not only is it suspect to what happened, it also it's suspect to why it was um, not looked at. And that's just one of the organizations. You look at the one of our institutions. You look at like Wall Street and, and the whole um, the the GameStop stuff. That's the exact same thing where they change the rules. Rich people have the ability to change the rules in the middle of the game. And you, and, and it's just it shows there's there's one of the guys that I manage that he was he was invested in that and that that was like it was really frustrating for him because he saw he saw behind the curtain and it was just like oh what what is this now and i and i told him it, it's literally us just losing we're, we're being shown that we don't have we can't trust our institutions to do what they're designed to do and and so what do you do you take yourself back from the institution and you prepare and you you increase the realm of sphere of influence that you have and and then that's that's how we build our nation back is we we fix our own homes we fix our own families and our own co um, communities there, there and, and it's been beautiful to see there's some states that um, there's some um, sheriffs that have been like they've declared that they're not going to they're going to um, to not allow federal agents to come into and, and invade people's homes to steal their guns there and, and there's been sheriffs that have have stepped up and, and protected their community and that's what needs to happen right now and they pass laws that they can arrest federal agents exactly exactly because where <laughs> and, and it'll get tied up in court if it ever happens and the you know and uh, whatever <laughs> but it the balance of power is supposed to be with the states and with the people of the states. Yeah. That's the balance of power. There's not supposed to be an ATF or an FBI or... Department of know. Energy or Department of... Yeah. Education. Education. What is the department... With, with its own SWAT what is the, yeah. Yeah, what is the Department of Education have guns? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yet they don't, they don't have security guards at my kids' schools. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's there, there's there's two things that, that come to my mind. Um, that's one of the reasons why we have so many millionaires in Congress. Is they're on the take. There's no anti-corruption laws. Nope, not anymore. Not that are being uh, enforced. And then the other one is that yes, we've we've gotten to where we we put more trust in the institution than in our in our fellow citizens and and uh, uh, or even on ourselves. We're, we're not allowed to think for ourselves I mean you know we've almost anything you post anymore that, that has your opinion on it <laughs> gets sent back to you that oh that's a oh no 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 that's that's false information <laughs> um, you know it, we we as a as a people are so worried about our kids being able to compete in the worldwide marketplace that we we literally teach them so that they can pass a test, not so that they can fend for themselves out in the real world. And uh, so when we are more concerned about them being able to pass the Iowa test of basic skills or whatever it is anymore, um, rather than, okay, do my kids understand what it means that when they get their first paycheck, what FICA means? Where's all that money going? What does FICA mean? That's, that's the government. That's the government taking its it's chunk out of your but we are we are a highly uneducated people regarding our own uh, civic responsibilities and, and rights and 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 so we end up with people like AOC we end up with people like Bi Biden and Obama uh, who just told us what we wanted to hear and instead of educating ourselves on either the candidates or the issues we decided to vote for who was cutest or who had the who had the uh, best looking whatever you know a, l a little closer to home we end up with Romney yes because he's LDS and he's the he's the guy for us he's a douchebag uh, did you see or hear anything of what he did while he was in Massachusetts that's not the guy to, to represent us and he's not he's representing himself and that's not what we that's not what we hired him for he's actually our employee all of them are, are our employees but they seem to think that they are 
it's the other way around and they can tell us what to do and so when you th read things like the 10th amendment that says you know those things that are not specifically enumerated are held in reserve for the states and for the people not for the feds to step in and say we're going to take control of this but we don't as a people don't know what our rights are anymore we we, we really don't um it's it's really pretty pathetic if you were to ask a, a graduating senior from either high school or college um, some of these very very basic uh, questions they're either not going to answer uh, not going to know the answer or they're going to answer wrong yeah because they don't know well and that's why it's important in the home to teach our kids because they're not going to learn it at school nope um, you know, I was, I was so proud of my daughter the other day because I, I ordered these little pocket constitutions and packs of 10 or 12 or whatever, and then I hand them out to people as needs be. Well, I went and I had my spare stack sitting on the table by the door at home, and I looked at it, there was only three left in there. <laughs> and I said, what the hell? Oh, no. So I asked my daughter, I'm like, have you been taking, constitu have you been taking some of these? Because I know that she has one in her little day bag thing, and then she has one in her backpack, and she says, I've taken like three of them, and she gave one to her teacher, she gave one to her <laughs> bus driver, <laughs> and so I was, I was getting Good upset. man, good man. I was getting upset, because <laughs> I didn't know what she was doing with them, and I, you know, and turns out she was handing them out. She was doing what she's And then I asked my wife, I'm like... Have you been taking some of these? She's like, yeah, I've been handing some of these. Out too. <laughs> but I, I mean, I'm just, that this, that's my fourth bag oh, of the that's constitutions awesome. that have been given out. I've given out a lot of them at work and and everything like that. And you know, it's it's really inspiring to me for people to um, want it. I've had a, quite a few of the guys that I work with say, hey, do you have any more of those pocket constitutions? I'm like, yes, I do. I've got, <laughs> Funny you should mention I've got some in my Jeep. Let, come find me after work and I'll get you one. That's and awesome. people are like, I'm, I'm going to argue people with facts. I'm like, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I, I, I work with uh, very like-minded individuals. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we... Uh, I don't like them. You probably would. Because <laughs> they have a mind? <laughs> but uh, we get talking and, and stuff like that, and everybody's talking about, you know, worst case scenario in Civil War. 71% of the population thinks that we're going to end up in a Civil War. So, I mean, it's that's going to happen. That's, that's, not the, that's not the worst Shit. case scenario in my mind. In my mind would be, you know, tyranny. The death of the Republic. Yes. But, uh, you know, what is it, when... When an opinion reaches over 35%, it will become a reality. Is that yeah. the st is, that's like that. the correct statistic, I believe. So, you know, when I talk to them, like, you know, the government's going to do what it's going to do. We don't really have any say in it. Not, not saying that we shouldn't, uh, that we shouldn't still contact our representatives and make our voices be heard and take every step that we can take to, you know restore the republic to its rightful place in peaceful means we should but I, I, I tell them I said you know but ultimately when they decide to cross that line whatever it may be probably the same as the line that was crossed the first time guns then you know it doesn't, the government's going to do what it's going to do at least we can stand together and die like free men they get all sorts of riled up and excited so it's, that's how you should feel. What do you mean uh, the first time with guns? So, um, the colonists, had, they've been doing their protests and, and whatnot for, what, 15 years or so? Quite a while. Before the first shots were fired. And I think the, the last straw was they were, the, the British Army was going to go raid the armory at Lexington. Lexington and, and Concord, they were going to yeah. go take the, the, the powder. The powder and the balls. Uh, the balls, the cannon, all that kind of stuff. They were, they were sneaking up there to, to grab it. And fortunately, we had people that were paying attention and had other things in mind. And 
we uh, we whooped up on them. And that's what started it. Well, the the hot part, the actual shooting. That's that's what started it. Um, yeah, at that point, it became a, it it was no longer a debate. It was it was real. Yep. So, How long after the Boston Tea Party was that? Uh, uh not very. It, it, the Boston Tea Party. Um, it had been a few years. It was. It was. It was like a, oh, like the Boston Massacre. Or, uh, yeah, you know, they call it the shot heard around the world. People seem to think that's when we started. No, we we, we started quite a bit earlier than that. Like I say, the the quartering acts were passed in 1765. You know, ten years before uh, we really got serious enough about it about it that we were. Uh, considering to drawing up the the uh, Declaration of Independence, um, and uh, so it, like I say, it didn't it didn't just happen overnight, Ugh. and we put up with a lot before we finally decided that okay, this is this is enough, and uh, but it it come down to. Uh, us finally deciding that we were going to do something about it more than just talk and uh, unfortunately it, it came to what what it did but the funny thing is is that and again this is another thing that most Americans are not aware of um, God had a hand in setting up this country from the very get-go uh, the Russians were here first the Chinese were here first long before what are the Chinese the, here? Chinese, the Chinese were here uh, back in the Middle Ages. Really? They landed on the on the West Coast, but again, it was not seen as being uh, profitable. And the same with the. Uh, uh, I knew the Vikings the, were the here. Port Portuguese had landed down in in uh, uh, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, but couldn't make a go of it. Um, and it was finally when the British came over. He. They were the ones that the Lord reserved this country for, and He kept the others away. And uh, this this country was set up so that there would be freedoms available, so that the restoration of the priesthood could occur, so that we could have temples, so that we could we could weld families back together again. And and for for anybody to think that that God was not here. Explain to me how it is that we won the Revolutionary War. <laughs> we didn't have, we may have had the, the, the gumption, we didn't have the support from Congress, we didn't have the support of the people. Uh, and again, same thing, most people do not understand that two-thirds of the population of this country were either, meh, or were Tories, were, were loyalists to the Crown. Uh, fewer than a third of our population stood up and, and fought for our freedom. Not just fought, but supported. Yeah. It was a very small percent. Yes. Um, and so it's, it's, uh, it comes down to us not being educated in our own history. It comes back to us not being educated or not educating ourselves. This is the information age. We, all of this is at your fingertips if you just go looking for it. But One, it's so much easier to just sit down and, and be pandered to. I have a small little device in my pocket that I can find out anything that I want to find out. That's not what I thought you were headed with that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things it that... Does buzz. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that... Uh, as I read the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants, and, and just a few, uh, what was two weeks ago, I want to say it was Doctrine and Covenants 6 or 7, I don't remember, but it just, there, it's all over in those scripture, in those, in those um, scriptures that as long as we stay true to God and keep Him first, this land is protected. And as yep. soon as we don't do that anymore, we have, we're, it's, it's, it's it's over, you know. It's it's, it, it's also in uh, Second Nephi chapter two. Uh huh. Um, where the Lord, sorry, you know, You're right. nobody's coming here except the Lord wants them here. Mm -hmm. And this will be a free land as long as we serve the God of this land. And as soon as we don't, 
there's the door except it won't be a door unless it's a <laughs> trap door underneath us you know well i think that was a big part of the restoration of the gospel because it's not it's not disappearing again nope it's here to stay and it's going to be rough it's going to be real rough at times you know it's, it's here to stay it's been prophesied that times are going to get are going to get really bad but you know we know the outcome we know that the republic will stand the constitution will be saved but that doesn't you know mean that we don't do our part no it won't be safe um, unless we unless we do yeah unless we do our so, part so I, there there's the elders of the church that are probably will probably be the last the last to stand up but will be the ones to save it but uh you know that's that's part of the the promise that's why god intends man to be free and that's that's abundantly clear through through the scriptures you know that's goes back to the whole war in heaven even. yeah yep. exactly um the, the pre-mortal existence i will choose for you and you will be saved look at look at the government yep but the, glor the, the glory right will be mine yep well um if you've never read it uh chris stewart and his brother wrote a couple of books. Um, one of them was uh, Seven Miracles of Saved America, and you know those 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 two books that they that they wrote together on that kind of thing. I read the Great and Terrible series. That was good. Yeah. Well, I I <laughs> read part of that, but but these others are actually you know for what's going on here right now. Yeah. You know because the Lord, like I said before, the Lord has preserved this country. He set this country up. He put men like George Washington. Thomas Jefferson, um, Ben Franklin. Uh, he put these men here at that particular time. He, he raised, literally raised them up to to do that work because it had to be done. We, there had to be a free country to establish all of these things that he needs done before the second coming. And that's why that's why he set this country up. That's why we were preserved from other other people and other other nations. And we have a great responsibility to, uh, to live up to on that. It takes me back to the part that I was gonna that I was gonna bring up. Thanks for reminding me. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, that that's the other reason reason why America can't and won't fail um, because of all the fail safes in the Constitution and because of the of the elders of the church. But in order for Christ to return, he has to have a people and a place to return to. Yep. He can't just, you know, show up. Well, I, I guess he could, but that's not part of that's not part of the deal. Well, uh, another thing that people don't take into account or don't realize that that God is of a necessity forced to, um, and maybe that's the wrong word, um, but. He has established laws that he himself cannot break. He will not take away our free agency. Um, he he may let a comet take us out, but he won't he won't remove <laughs> our, our free agency. Um, you know, I like those, that. Those, well, you know, we're gonna get this done one way or the other, right? Right. Um, but all these prophecies that have been made, everything is going to have to be uh, lived up to and, and fulfilled. There's. And, well, which is amazing that he holds he has a standard that he holds himself to yeah. as well there's something I'd like to point out with that though that that free agency being so sacred um, specifically with like I've had uh, state presidencies and stuff like that especially with the, the pandemic and stuff they'll be very uh, easy to to say oh you have to wear a mask or oh you have to do this or oh you have to do that and it's very clear to me Excellent. that those things when when church leaders tell you what to do they're they're using line. they're using your faith to control your agency and if they're not if they're not actually commanded from God to do that it is our place to tell them and to simply and not not maliciously I, I I'm not I, I have no 
will of, of, there's no, um, what's the right word, uh, desire for, for rebellion in me. But if someone is going to use my faith to control my agency, I am going to testify to God what they have done. I, and I and I have no problem telling my lead, my my church leaders saying, okay, is this what God wants me to do? Are you telling me this as a representative of God or not? And if they are not willing to say that, if they are and they're not, I make it clear to them, okay, I will be holding you accountable to this before the judgment bar of God. You that, that I do not take that. It's very uh, I take that very seriously, and it's 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 because I hold agency so sacred. The commandments that that our church leaders share with us have to be from God. Otherwise, that's that's they need to know that they're accountable for what they do. And because because there's one thing to be a careless uh, someone who hasn't put thought into it and say like, oh, this is for the the best thing. And you start asking people to do things, and then it's like, okay, well, I I think I'm doing good, you know. And it's another thing to know, okay, this is what God wants me to do. This is what God is telling me. And the, the whole purpose of the church is so that we can understand God's His will. The whole reason that God works through prophets is so that God can tell us to do things and still have mercy on us when we don't listen. And still have mercy on us when, we're, when we screw up. If He told us everything that we had to do, He would have to hold us perfectly accountable for what we screw up on. If He, if he uses prophets, He can still lean on mercy a little bit. He can still be a little bit uh, forgiving. Because we're, we're idiots, and we're not going to listen. And so there is a real purpose for prophets. There is a real purpose for the church. There's a real purpose for the way that God, he, why he works through prophets. And it let everything is so that he can get us back to him as much as possible. So he can help us to grow, help us to learn experience, help us to learn um, to, to not be ignorant, but also forgive us when we're dummies. To also forgive us when we screw up. And there's, there's this fine line that people people when when we start worshiping people in the church oh the, the prophet said this or oh the so uh, my stake president said this or oh when we start worshiping people we're flirting with that line in a bad way and we have to be very careful about that well people worship our representatives yeah there's I mean. <laughs> which remind me about that and I'll, I'll share with you some words from a from a, an Avenged Sevenfold song. But we were talking um, about the build-up to the Declaration of Independence, and I wanted to find the, the spot on it where, it's talk, where it was talking about what we were talking about. Um, and so we're clear down here, the ways down. It says, but when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, invinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. And then they go and on. And a long yeah. list. Yeah. And a long list. I mean, I, from what I'm looking at, <laughs> the next three pages. So. Yeah. But. It'd, be, it'd be interesting to take to do a use uh, a study and say uh, and take that list of, of grievances and then cross reference with things today that have reference to the, the same grievance and, and be like okay this and then say the the, the news articles this and say the news article or whatever or the, or the date or whatever it was and it's just like see 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 where we're at because we're 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 flirting with that that list of grievances and we we are una we are unaware of our history so we are doomed to repeat it yeah in a and, lot of ways oh sorry go ahead no i mean that in, in many ways that's that's exactly what you put you're you're exactly right that's what's going on that, that we uh we have we have forgotten our history we've forgotten what has happened we we we, we turn a blind eye to what's going on right now and um when push comes to shove and we finally have to 
uh, repeat our history, it's not going to be fun. No. Well, I believe in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, we we're more oppressed than than the founding generation was. And well, because they were aware of it. We are not. We have no idea. So here's 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 the uh, part from the Avenged Sevenfold song that I was going <laughs> to tell you. This is going to tell you about. It says Jesus Christ was born to die. Leave it to man to levitate his own to idolize. We're simply sociopaths with no communication. Baby, I see your angle, but we differ from our points of view. So tell me, what's your cross to bear? Hmm. What song is that? Avenge Sevenfold, the stage. I'll play it for you when we're done if you want. <laughs> I love Avenge Sevenfold. I think you would like them too. Well, they say the F word a lot, so you might not. That's why you love them. <laughs> so, my boy loves Avenge Sevenfold too. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> But I did have to, he says, I want to listen to one song. <laughs> and I had a moment where I'm like, maybe I'm not the greatest parent in the world. <laughs> I want to listen to the effing nightmare song, Dad. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> okay, look, buddy, that's a really bad word that we don't say. Which, again, is hypocritical because we say it a lot. <laughs> but, I mean, one thing that I, that I like about him is... Um, a lot of their songs are, you know, they've got really good lyrics with really good messages. And stuff you, mean can it, you can actually hear and understand the words? Yeah. That's just your old, you old people. <laughs> Coming from you, that sounds really weird. Because <laughs> you've been a premature old person since like high school. <laughs> Why would you say that? Evidence. <laughs> we used to talk about growing old and sitting on the porch and yelling at kids, remember? I do that already. I cuss at people a lot from my driver's seat. <laughs> oh, dude. It's a good thing I don't have one of them GoPros in my car. You dumb mother... <laughs> so, another story about me failing as a parent. <laughs> a few years ago... Uh, we were driving in town and somebody pulled out right in front of us. I hit a, had to hit on the brakes. And I didn't say anything this time. But my boy says, What an asshole. <laughs> Hi, Dad. <laughs> yeah, you know what? <laughs> we're good. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> now that you mention it. I have a lot of shortcomings, and my children have been very good at showing me those, and I have not worked on them. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go back to uh, Amendment 4. You want to read it? Sure. <clears throat> the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported support, support, supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized in other words there has to be reasonable cause there has to be reasonable Ca limitations cause, it has to be very very specific I, I liked how it said specific place where they're searching also the specific thing they're searching for yes those two things coupled because it's like oh we're gonna search not, for the not guns a, not a fishing it's expedition like, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> so you could literally have uh, uh, a, a grow house going on in your basement and they come looking for guns and they can't use the the drugs against you because the warrant was for Firearms and explosives, not or for, vice or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the protection that, that they provided for us. Brilliant, yep. by the way. Oh well, yeah, it's almost like they foresaw the 20th century. So it's almost like God had known 
<laughs> almost, almost like he, he had some idea of what we were going to be facing the next little while. Yeah. But I mean, if we if we look at, we'll come back to this in just a second. But if we look at uh, you know the things that are going on in the last, we'll say five years, and what government is trying to do and accomplish, and we look at the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, <laughs> and we look at our founding documents, it's prophetic to see that they included all these things, because these are all the things that man has always done in cycles over and over and over through, through all time, but they, they foresaw and included every possible thing that could happen. Pretty close, yeah. It's it's brilliant. It's beautiful. It's inspired, and that's why you can't argue with me that you know God didn't have a hand in in helping these men establish and and right frame this form of government. Yep. One of the things you said is how how man ha does this in cycles. Um, I, there's a there's a really good book called The Fourth Turning. Um, there were these two um, I don't remember who they were, but they were they were historians and they were writing a history and they kind of came together. But they 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 both came to a similar conclusion and they wrote this book together. And um, it at the very like the very first chapter of the book they talk about how like in the very very primitive societies they viewed nature as like chaotic as like oh you know it, it snows oh no it, it, they didn't understand and specifically like in tropic regions and stuff like that it, it, you could see this being more of a problem but they viewed nature as being chaotic as you start going into agrarian societies where they're they're growing their own foods when you start to um, be growers instead of like hunter gatherers and stuff like that you have these societies that start realizing that there's a cycle to the earth and through our industrial revolution, through our growth in the in the um, as a country, we've we've kind of viewed it as like it's not cyclical, it's linear. And so we think that we think it, that there's this hubris there where it's like, oh, we've learned from the previous generations, and that's not actually true. We still have cycles, and there is a growth, there is a linear formality, but there is cyclical representation from generation to generation and they, they in the book they identify four different type four different archetypes of generations and they go through and isolate it and they and they say like oh the um they go through the silent generation and the greatest generation and the boomers and then the the uh the generation x and the millennials and they the, the book was written in like 1994 or 95 or something like that but they they predicted how in the um or, I think they said 2017 or 2020 or close to they predicted these different problems are going to happen and they they had like four or five things that could happen but it was like it was it was it was a I I as I was reading it I read it um to have around. what <laughs> she said you're like the most handy person to have around why not you oh I've got my eyes closed the whole time this whole time I've had my eyes closed because I I can't see the the smoke's blowing at me you got him monologuing damn it. <laughs> You sly dog, you got me monologuing. <laughs> Maybe. Anyways, book's really good. <laughs> so what you what you're saying is that there's that we really aren't going with with global warming. You you, you mean that, that that the planets themselves are are, are warmed by the sun? There's well, just, how is this possible? There's just as much global warming as there was global cooling in the 60s. <laughs> well, there's climate change, and it's called the seasons. <laughs> yes, thank, thank you, thank you. So, so look at this. It takes Earth 365 days to complete an orbit around the sun, right? Allegedly. And a quarter. <laughs> Remember that quarter is important. 44 and a quarter? That's, yeah, that's yeah. okay. <laughs> so we have Jupiter way the hell out there and I don't remember how long it takes to make you a trip around the sun it's like eight years or some shit right it's a so, long time anyway it takes a long time for Jupiter to go around the sun but Jupiter is so massive that it's pulling the sun with it 800,000 miles off its axis as as Jupiter goes around because it's so big and hey, so it's pulling the entire galaxy with it as it spins so we're going to have different periods it, there's of... there's something it's it's called precession um the a funeral no not quite like that 
close. We're getting there. But the Earth is not sitting directly straight up and down according to the North and mm -hmm. South Pole. We're sitting at about 23 or so degrees, which gives us winter time right now, and the southern southern hemisphere is enjoying summertime right now. Um, and and that that axis, we we wobble a little like a top. And so I think it, it is either 23 or 33,000. I think it's every 23,000 years we will actually go all the way over and all the way back again. Really? So right now, the North Star is up here, and it's really, you know, we call it the North Star for that reason, the Pole Star. At the other side, it will be we will be pointed this direction instead of this way. Fascinating. There is absolutely nothing we can do about that. And so as, as the uh, axis of the Earth changes, we are going to get warmer or cooler depending on what part of the globe you're in at that, that particular time. And uh, to, to claim that, are, are we having some effect? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we probably are having some effect. I mean, I, I back in the 70s, um, when I was a kid, we had, uh, the big thing then was acid rain. And that came about by, you know, uh, burning all the fossil fuels, coal and oil and stuff like this, and you're creating sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere and so when it rained it would turn into acid and it would eat away at the particularly the monuments and, and stuff like that the limestone and and whatnot that are made of buildings and and, and uh, monuments and stuff like that particularly in the in the east <clears throat> and uh, so they they made some modifications you know now you got like co2 scrubbers and stuff like this at a uh, industri industrial smokestacks and things like that to help reduce that and we have reduced that we have you know back in the 90s we had the the whole um, ozone hole thing uh, and then stuff like that but as far as global warming it, the way they're talking about it if if there is any uh, truth to the fact there's nothing we can do about it because how are we going to modify the tilt the axis of the earth it ain't gonna happen. We're not supposed to use our own science against them. <laughs> you've, you've science already, is impartial. You, there's, you can't let an uh, emergency go to waste. Yeah. yeah. It is not about gun control, it's about control. Yep. As long as we have guns, they are not truly in control. Yep. And they know that. Yep. As long as the government fears us, we will be free. When we have to fear the government, we're no longer citizens, we're subjects. Now, what is always the first casualty of tyranny? Truth. Hence, censoring everything. Yep. So if you don't have access to the actual truth, or even if it's not the truth, if I don't have access to other opinions, if I can't bounce things off of somebody else, if I'm left to basically suss it out myself, I, I, I won't know for sure what the truth is because... Somebody who's got more power than me is pushing a little button saying, no, you can't do that. Yeah. That's why the whole fact checker thing should be, like, really disturbing to anybody. Yes. Fact check. The fact checker thing should not be disturbing. It should be encouraging. You should feel better now. Now that I've told you the truth, you don't have to worry about it. Well, my favorite thing is when I see a fact check on something. and My favorite one is when... There's a picture of Biden telling the auto worker, I don't yeah. work for you. <laughs> this has been fact-checked. I heard him say it. I yeah. watched the I, entire yeah. exchange. Yeah. I loved yeah. when he said... Listen here, jackass. I know what happened. <laughs> I loved when he said recently, everybody knows that I love children more than I love people. He said that. Yeah. Not he like, liter literally not said like that. What, what, yeah, exactly. What is, what is the true definition of pedophile? A lover of children. <laughs> Well, you know, we've all we've all known for a long time that a politician a politician's word isn't worth jack shit. Or that might be the only word. Right? You looked away, and I was worried I could. I don't know how well. There's I one right there. And there's one right there, jackass. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna hold it over here so we can hear you as little as possible. <laughs> that's probably that's for the best. <laughs> I would say mean things too, but you beat me to it. 
I've been playing this game a lot longer than you have. <laughs> anyway. You're so, so mean. So we've all known for a long time that a politician's word is pathetic. They promise up and down what they're going to do and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so with this election, it's been more frustrating than any point before in my life because Biden canceled the pipeline, um, gas prices are going up, he's done this, he's done that, that's affecting all these other things. Put your hand down, I'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> and then everybody acts surprised. Like, he he pissed off the unions his first day in office, yeah. <laughs> and everybody's all surprised that he's doing these things. It's like... Look here, you dumbass. What's their agenda? Are you honestly surprised that they're killing jobs, that they're killing our industry, that they're killing uh, the oil industry, which a lot of people rely on, especially in flyover country? You're surprised? How stupid are you? Have you guys heard of what's going on in Texas? With the storm? With the power outages. Yeah. Anyways, um... I don't want to talk about that right now. I want to ask a question. <laughs> so, Hands when... Hand in the air. Yeah. When um, Biden gets into office and signs, I don't know, 35 or whatever, executive orders on, like, his first day, and he signs executive orders to uh, undo what Trump did, how come Trump was so... How come he couldn't sign executive orders to undo what Obama did? Well, the DOJ... Well... Yeah, the DOJ would, was fast-tracking Obama's executive orders where they slow-walked Trump's because the Democrats have outplayed the Republicans in the courts, in, in, the, in the long game. The Republicans have been outplayed, and I don't know that there's any way of catching up to that unless we start sending, you know, real, honest legitimate state statesman to represent us not only at the federal level but at the state level yeah and That's true you know i think we have we have some hope with the uh, conventions of uh, convention of states but i don't think that's going to happen so in all reality if we have any hope of saving the republic in a peaceful in, in a peaceful way, it's going to be through who we send to represent us. And it's not going to be by sending Mitt Romney's and Mitch McConnell's or Nancy Pelosi's or any of them to represent us. It has to be honest statesmen who aren't interested in playing the games, aren't interested in, in fitting in. That's we, we have to send men and women who value, cherish, and understand the Constitution. and More are, than their own political career. Yeah. Yep. Better than themselves. <clears throat> That's why it's been so key for them to turn all of the elections into a, um, a general, like a popularity contest. Yeah. Um, that's the, the caucuses and stuff like that have been so undercut in the sense of like, you can't, the, uh, uh, they, they say, that they under the, the, the pretense that you want to give every, every citizen a, a vote, you, no, not, no, no candidate is vetted out by a lot of by a large group of citizens that have power. It's just name recognition. It's whoever has the money to pay for the ads. That's and how we ended up with Mitt Romney. Yeah. Well, and, and he also, had money. I learned the other day that Warren Hatch said that he wouldn't retire unless Mitt, Ram, Mitt Romney ran for his spot. Because he knew he was a bird of a feather. Bird of a feather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're. Uh, and again, that comes down to, I, I, like I said earlier, we, we we get what we deserve because if we don't bother to educate ourselves on either the candidates or the opinions, or the uh, issues, like sorry, um, we're, we're going to get what we deserve. What are you worried about? Where's the break? Oh. Get your mission!
Hindi mo yan. <laughs> have an unidentified green mark on there. Yeah, the sun's gone down anyway. Warm. Oh, I did, but <laughs> even then. Get it back by the fire. Uh, I was, I've been eyeing that and I was worried. I would have done a double backflip to keep it from touching the ground. What? I would have done a double backflip to keep it from touching the ground. Yeah. Do you want one of these? I've got one still. Okay. Trying to stoke the fire up a little bit more. I hope you don't mind. I haven't been looking at all of you guys. Because I can't see a thing. I am offended. Well, I'm glad you are. Well, I've seen me before and I'm not I don't look at me either, so <laughs> I know what there is and it's not great. <laughs> okay. Shit. Get out of the get out of the window. Push the button. Oh, it's a light. Did you push the button? <laughs> Still going. It's a flashlight on the I'm glad you joined us today. It's alright. I wish at the wind least wasn't blowing. Snowing. <laughs> well, if it was snowing, maybe the wind wouldn't be blowing yeah. as hard. Son of a bitch. This is somewhat friendly, family friendly. Uh, mm. Certain deal. Certain <laughs> aspect. <laughs> you know, my mom has watched all of these. Has she watched all of them? I think so. Um, anyways, she told me, she either told me or my wife, I don't remember, because this has been a couple months ago, she said, I just wish that they would be more professional. <laughs> You're barking up the wrong tree, Susan. <laughs> you can expect that from Fred, but you should know better than to expect that from me. <laughs> but if we're up to her, it would probably be like a, a shirt and tie oh, type yeah. event. And I am not about that. don't like that. I really honestly thought a few times about uh, wearing a t-shirt and jeans to church. <laughs> Because I'm so opposed to shirt and tie. Well, believe it or not, at one point I thought I'd be a teacher for a living. Even a seminary teacher. I think all three of us. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, when I, when, I, when I got to doing the, the student teaching aspect of it, I'm like, nah, I ain't got what it takes. man. <laughs> Kids thought that too, so, you know. Poor their Cal evaluations were... Uh, how do I want to put this... Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Less than encouraging. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, yeah, I don't think I would have. No. So, 
<laughs> I get told, you should go to school and you should be a, a, a history teacher. You'd be really good at that. I'm like, no, I wouldn't. I'd get fired for hitting one of my students. <laughs> <laughs> because they were being a jackass. You know, back when I was a kid, yeah, you teachers got away with that. <laughs> I was Anymore, born, you? I was born at least one generation too late. <laughs> But uh, we had a, our ag teacher was our shop teacher, and he would he would build a new board of education every year, <laughs> and uh, he he got use out of it. <laughs> we we got walloped, and nobody said a word about it. You know, because y'all knew you deserved it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now yeah. there's no personal responsibility, and we see that from from school age children all the way up to adults. Yeah. Like with the whole. Uh, student loan forgiveness why should i have to pay for you to go to school and i had a cousin that i saw a post from on facebook today that said not wanting to pay somebody's or not supporting student loan forgiveness because you paid your loans is like not feeding the hungry because you already ate like it's nothing like that no it's not like that eating is a necessity and we should help out people who need help if we're in a position to help them we should absolutely do that. But I should not have to pay for your degree because you got a degree in musical therapy or, you know, some arts degree and you can't get a job. That's not, not my fault that skill. you're stupid. Yeah, why do I pay for that? See, I think I've got a different opinion than you guys on this one. And just to be clear, I didn't ever, I, I graduated from college, I never took out a student loan, I paid for college as I went, and so, so I do have some skin in the game, obviously, like, it, as you guys do, if they pay for it with taxes, but the way I see it is, like, the, the universities, they have, um, they've screwed gen uh, generations, and I think that the, I think that the, I'm, I'm completely okay with the government appropriating that those funds from the universities and paying the students if, if that's yeah. actually how they do it exactly exactly you know because uh, Be the, the, and one of the reasons that tuition is so high is because the government got involved and started giving loans to everybody. well the exactly government, the government guaranteed those loans and, and you can't even you can't get rid of them through bankruptcy no and so the, the the loans themselves is a corrupt system because the government got involved the the universities are leveraging that to make hand over fist on these students oh. students and it's it's one of those things that where really it's like it's criminal it's criminal it's and, and you think of it you can take out hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt before you can drink like uh, same with same with the military yeah you can you can go they can send you across seas and go fight and die before you can legally drink and it's just like it's it there's there's some there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> <laughs> well i i went through school on on uh loans on grants on scholarships and working my last year at idaho state my last yeah my, my senior year two my junior and senior years I was holding down 18 and 21 credit hours, working three and sometimes four part-time jobs. Um, so I would get home. I was a, a projectionist at the school theater, <clears throat> so I would get home at one, two in the morning, and I would have to be at work at six. Six on beer, probably. Um, I can smell it. And so. Uh, they don't get a lot of sympathy from me. I, I'm just looking at it like, oh, and then they say, well, you can't do that. No, you can't do it today. You can't do it today because we have allowed the government to get involved in some place that they had nothing, nothing doing in there. Um, we have allowed schools to continually jack up tuition rates. We have allowed professors to rewrite a text, change three or four words or a picture, and then demand that the students buy the new edition of book and use it instead of uh, a, a being able to, to use a, a book from a, a previous year and, and then they give you nothing hundreds of dollars yeah hundreds of dollars for, for a, a 350 a, a book. dollar books are not uncommon yep for, for a, a damn book that they use one year 
when it, you well, can simply your... get a PDF. I mean, it's it, it's it's all about appropriation of of wealth. I mean, if you want to talk about taxation without representation, that's it right there. That and what we're doing to our children, those like and, and then the and and that's not completely fair because people do still have agency. They still have the ability to to go into a trade or go into do something more useful, but culturally where oh you have to have a, a degree to do something and it's like that is such a load of bull that's such it's so bs to degrees are not what they used to be and it's it's they're they're not only are they less useful they're more of a hindrance it's 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 just a, a different form of indentured slave servitude you know well and and when um they they spend all this time and money getting the gender studies degree or the uh, underwater basket weaving or campus wildlife or whatever it is <laughs> um, and then they complain that they can't find a job well how was that my fault well no shit you can't you, find you, a job you you took you did what i want to do what i'm passionate about well yeah. do something that you're passionate about that makes money well and and again i i'll use myself as, as an example because i'm the one i know <laughs> I went through and I, I got my I, I watched what what was going on around me and these guys that unless they were in either law or medicine they go in and they spend all this time and money and effort to, to get their degree and come home and become a welder now we need welders I'm not saying anything about that but I, I decided well, that okay, some welders are saying? I'm so, I, well I decided that <laughs> if I'm going to go and do that same kind of thing spend all that time and money and effort I'm going to learn things I want to know. So I went through and I got my degree. And guess what? I'm working with guys who can hardly string three words together. Who are making <laughs> as much money as I'm making after having that degree. Now, am I, am I upset about that? No, I am not. Because I can literally sit down with a neurosurgeon, with a historian, with a sociologist, with a rocket scientist, with an archaeologist, with a geologist with a chemist, with a, 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 a politician or, a, you know, those kinds of things. And I can have a reasoned, intelligent, thoughtful discussion with them on the subject of their choosing because I took the things I wanted to know rather than listening to the damn uh, advisors telling me to, you know, take this class and that class and that class over there because that's what you... Really? <laughs> yeah, no. So so I'm, I'm now a... I'm now a... A, uh, a degree holder in in uh, underwater basket weaving, and what can I have? What can I ever possibly do with that? <laughs> Zero, zilch, nada. Well, another thing with school, especially now, is a lot of people aren't necessarily paying for an education as much as they are paying for an indoctrination. Yep. From what I've seen, basically, I only a little did piece a paper they hang on the wall. I only did a semester of school, but. Uh, you know, that's now was that was your choice thing. or was that the school's? <laughs> well, one that was of, my choice. I said this sucks. <laughs> it's it's on so many different levels too. For example, my wife in two thousand, what was it, sixteen or so? She took a class um, where it, this was one of the required classes and was suggested, but the class curriculum was biology and citizenship. First off, why would you huh? link those two? Yes, exactly. Second off, why would sense. why would part of the curriculum of the class be requiring you to write representatives in regards to climate change, in regards to transgenderism, in regards to they they, they gave you a bunch of different things and resources. It was, it, it's a le le legitimate indoctrination class, and it was just like why why is this why is this curriculum being taught together? There, there's no excuse for it. There's no justification for it. It's straight up activism like yeah. they're, they're teaching activism and that's like that's from a state school and it's like well the uh, like i said earlier our institutions are faltering they're just faltering yeah. we no longer can have trust that our institutions are doing what they were established to do because they're not it's because they've been corrupted yep am i yelling like, what of... <laughs> <laughs> at least i got my eyes closed <laughs> I wish you had you a mean you, 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 you can't yell with your eyes open? I can't! <laughs> <laughs> is that where your volume button is? <laughs> I think the, the world makes so much more sense right now. You're not drunk, so that's... Yeah, I was going to say... Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I've is been, in here? Because I've been drunk. I've been drunk a lot. 
And the world made a lot more sense when I was drunk. Made the army bearable, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I think that's why they encourage it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that and it reduces your your uh, resistance if you're sloshed half the time. I, I read a book called um, Ordinary Men, and it was about uh, kill. It was one of the um, one of the platoons in uh, in Germany during World War II, and, and it was the average age of the guy. Of the guy, I don't know if platoon is the right word. I forgot the the words for it. But basically, it was one of the kill squads, and there were regular people. The average age was like 45. You would think they would really. Be, you would think there would be these young, yeah, um, indoctrinated people. But it was it was these it was it was tradesmen, it was craftsmen that were just thrown together and they were propagandized. But it he, it went through and it talked about how like after the first night where they had to have this mass execution the the psychologist got everybody together and he's like okay give them alcohol get them encourage them to talk about it and they and they talk about it tonight and then after that night they were always they, they were never encouraged to talk about it it was it was a silent bond that they held and and he just slowly did these little things to weld them together and to make them so they would not question what they were supposed to do and it was just like as soon as like and and it was it was so interesting because there was nobody whenever anybody would would show like um that they weren't going to conform they weren't punished there was nothing wrong with them they simply just uh, took them to a different group and it and it left basically exiled yeah it, it ex exiled them and those people that were there they they were loyal to each other in a way that they didn't think about what they were doing and it, it was subverting the loyalty and the goodness of man with propaganda, and they, were, they thought that they were fighting for their people. They thought that the they were stopping people from coming in and bomb, bomb, bombing their homes. They thought, that, I mean, you know, and it's just so so much so much propaganda, and it can do so much evil. And it can do like the, the when 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 we try and, and what it, what what it comes down to is subverting that agency, just like we talked in the beginning. It's subverting that agency, that ability to choose. No man can make good choices in ignorance. And we have to have the good and the bad so we can make a choice. We have to be influenced by both so that we can deliberately choose make, good. Make an, make an educated choice. Exactly. And so it's like when you, when, you, when you start playing with these pillars of what makes this reality, that opportunity, you, you ruin a lot of things. And I don't think that God's wrath is going to be light when, it comes, when, when push comes to shove. I don't think that it's going to be a good day when, when the chickens come home to roost, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah there's going to be some people that are in for a rude awakening. Yeah, that's me. Well, I think in large measure, the, the, the biggest one is going to be those who actually perpetrated the hoax. The followers can kind of be excused for their ignorance, but the people who knowingly did you know, I don't know how you. I don't know how you get around that. Yeah, and that's what we talked about earlier with working through prophets. Yeah, it's that ability for God to give um, as much mercy as possible, because he, he, I mean, the, he loves all of his children. That's the fact of it. We are all God's children, and it's like when we turn against him, then it's like no, you're you you've deliberately defied him. You've deliberately gone away from him, and and that's when his wrath is kindled. But when people don't deliberate, when their when their agency is subverted, that still gives him an opportunity to to show mercy, to some degree at least. But like the the truth is though, we all have this ability to know right from wrong. Well, there's there's a, that's that's why it's um, there's a difference between sinning in ignorance and sinning in uh, omission and commission. And uh, if you if you knowingly wantonly rebel, you're gonna you're gonna pay a much higher price than someone who was led astray or someone who did not know. And so those who don't have the gospel uh, will will literally be held to a different standard than those who, who were aware of it and, and chose to live another way. Um, those folks are gonna that's gonna be a, a bad day for them. As it ought to be, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's it's one thing to you know, not know what you're doing. 
uh, someone on the outside can see what's happening and, and, and can warn you. But if you don't know, it's like, like a, a child. A child does not recognize, does not comprehend the danger in walking out in the street. Um, someone, uh, an adult or an older child, would have a better understanding. And so someone who threw the ball deliberately out there trying to get a child to follow it is, is going to be, has, has committed a, a, a greater uh, crime than, than the child just wandering out there and, and unfortunately being the one to pay the consequences for not knowing. Um, and it, I mean that, that, that comes down to all of us that if, if we're if we're if we're not educated or not educating ourselves, then then um, knowledge it's, is a pain. It, it it can be. It can be. But you know, on the flip side of that, <clears throat> knowledge can be a bit uh, pain. But if you don't try to seek out that knowledge, if you don't try to further your understanding, your, your knowledge, that is also held against you. Yeah, if you, if you had the so. opportunity and didn't take advantage of it, yeah, that's, you know, that's going to be looked at with a, with a jaundiced eye, too. Or if you know and you don't share and you don't, you don't speak, that, too, is held against yeah. you. Yeah, that's... That's uh, that's another one that can come back and, and bite pretty hard. My mom had the experience where, so she grew up in California, and she went up to BYU when she went to um, college, and she had she was sitting there uh, somewhere at BYU, and some guy came up from across the park or wherever. I don't I don't I don't know the campus very well, so I don't know where exactly it was, but he came up, he saw her, and he came directly to her, and he pointed his finger at her. And he's like, Lisa, he's like, you did not tell me about the gospel in third grade. Why not? And she's like, whoa. <laughs> who are you? Exactly. And it was some guy who moved. They, they had, they, they had like first through third grade together and that was it. But he was like, why didn't you tell me about the gospel? It's like, whoa. You know? And it's just like, that, that's the type of thing that I don't, I, I don't let it haunt me, but I'm, but I do know that I have a lot of areas to improve on. I have a lot of areas to improve on. We all do. But that's the... That's the goodness of mercy. We all have areas to improve on. We all have things to <coughs> continue to learn and, and share. And that will never that will never stop. But we have to do that. And, you know, some people may think you're foolish or um, not like what you have to say or disagree with you, but that's not an excuse given to uh, not share, to not... Uh, well, and some people just are not ready to receive um, at that particular time, you know. Uh, there's guys that I work with that are, are baptized members of the church, but haven't seen the inside of a church since they were baptized you know so to speak so um, they're not going to be willing to listen to something like this and so I try to set an example um, through my actions more than through my words and hope that you know the time comes that that they are ready or more willing to receive that that the right person will be in place then to help with the verbal portion um because i just you know there's there's some people you some people you try to uh force it on them and and they they run screaming the other way and you, you haven't you haven't served any purpose at that point yeah well and that's establishing your yourself because um, as being passionate and knowledgeable in what you're speaking about um, uh, for example a lot of a lot of people are surprised at work when they they'll say hey Mitch do you want to go to the bar with us after work or whatever I'm like I don't drink <laughs> 
and they anymore. then they find out yeah anymore or then, any less then, uh, <laughs> then they they, th <laughs> <laughs> they find out that I'm I'm Mormon they're surprised and I said yeah I'm not a very good one I don't claim to be a very good one but <laughs> so I I don't get asked a whole lot of questions about the gospel I have a converse I have conversations with a few people at work about it but uh, you know that's about where that stops but. Um, when it comes to asking about guns or about the Constitution and freedom and, you know, goings on, so to speak, um, they'll ask me my opinion and say, you know, what, what's this all about? Or, you know, I want to get, I want to get a good rifle for, you know, protecting my family or whatever. You know, what do you, what do you suggest? And it's all part of that knowledge so that you can not only better yourself but so you can help better other people like what what John does with his with his classes and stuff like that and I, it's great but it can be a bane <laughs> because then you're you're beholden to that higher standard and you know that you're beholden to that higher standard yeah. and it's harder <laughs> yep yep <laughs> but we're not supposed to be comfortable there's no growth in comfort. Nope. That's a very good point. I, doing the right thing, I don't think it's supposed to be easy. We talk a lot about, on here about doing the right thing. And, you know, doing the right thing and gaining knowledge leads to a lot of uh, a lot of uncomfortableness uncomfortableishness nailed it <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason why it's called in the bible it talks about taking up your cross it's not that we're encouraged to go get crucified but we are encouraged <laughs> to take a few steps with Christ and yeah. that's because what is your cross to bear yeah Salvation is not meant to be a cheap experience. No. Eternal life, that's not going to be cheap. That's why it, it, it is hard. And it does... It, we have to go through the bad parts. of our. We have to get rid of the bad parts of us. We have to be refined. The process of, of taking ore and extracting metal and, and extracting something as pure as gold... There's a lot of heating, a lot of changing, a lot of really, really burning off, burning off the the, the crap, and it that's got it, it, that's got to be what it's like for us. Um, you know, that's that's like uh, arc welding, and you know, you arc and the an arc or uh, an arc rod has flux on the outside, and then they have. Uh, for some of the wire feed welders, they have what's called flux core, and that builds up a coating on the outside to keep um, impurities from getting in or gas or stuff to, that will weaken the weld. Yeah, that will compromise the integrity of the weld. And when you're done with the with any weld that has to do with flux, you take a chipping hammer and you chip off that flux to ex to expose the weld. And if you did your job, <laughs> if you did your job right, it should be, you know, a really good weld. It should, it should look good. It should be, you know, for lack of a better word, pretty. And you know, that's kind of what we, what we go through. But no, nothing worthwhile ever was ever cheap or easy. Okay. Kind of like I think, I think hanging it was... out with you. I think it was, uh... Except for you are cheap and easy. Yeah. That's what it says on the bathroom wall. <laughs> I wish I had my eyes open at this time so I could see better. <laughs> All you're going to see is this. <laughs> I think it was Bruce McConkey said something like, no man will ever make the sacrifice um, to gain eternal life if they don't know in their hearts that the reward is worth the price. And so if we don't, if we're not honestly striving, if we're not purposely living, then yeah, 
we, we, we won't get there because we won't we won't uh, realize or recognize that or maybe we will that 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 the meager amount of effort that we put forward doesn't justify the distance of the bridge or the the bridging the gap that Christ would have to do in order to get us there so well we don't earn salvation we have to uh, we have to at least put forward a good effort to at least justify to some degree the amount of sacrifice made for us you know uh, <clears throat> one thing that I was just thinking about was how amazing it is that we all have our own our own realms of knowledge and understanding that comes naturally to us and you know we were taught from a younger age that you know God has given us these talents and he expects us to use them and he expects us to share them because if we don't we will lose them and um, it's absolutely true but I, I, I was just thinking about how amazing it is to just have a natural understanding for something and sitting here I was just thinking about the three of us um, we have this natural understanding for the founding of our, our country our founding documents how the United States is supposed to operate um, as according to that document and our understanding of it and it's amazing that we have that and we have an obligation to share that to better our fellow man and it's just it's a humbling experience uh, thought for me thinking about that because you know think you think about yourself and you're you know I'm just one man um, I don't know why anybody would want or have any any reason to listen to me or you know I don't know it's kind of hard to explain but I, I just I think it's pretty amazing and pretty special to be given these gifts but weighing on the other side of that it's the responsibility that we have with those gifts well I was asked to give a talk in church they don't ask years me back. to do that because I swear every well, time they, I do yeah, they, they don't they don't ask me much <laughs> anymore either <laughs> but I got to looking and depending on what numbers you use um, one guy estimated that the total population that has ever lived on the earth is somewhere north of 113 billion people and in that entire history and amongst that entire population we in the United States of America right now represent less than half, one half of one percent uh, of that total population and the freedoms that we enjoy, the freedoms that we take for granted, the, the, the overwhelming majority of the entire population of the history of this earth cannot even fathom what we enjoy today. And so, yeah, it's incumbent on us to, to, to uh, spread that as best we can and to, to do what we can with it in order to uh, maintain for our children and grandchildren what our grandparents bequeathed to us. And uh, so we, we, have, we have a responsibility. And I, I think we will be called to account for it. One of, one of the things that... The, 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 one of the reasons why we named this podcast Elders Rising is because... A lot of people realize that, and they, they see that, and they acknowledge that to some intellectual level. But they all think that, oh, somebody's going to do something. Somebody's going to protect it. Somebody will stand up. Somebody will do the right thing. Somebody will, will defend the Constitution. And we are the cavalry. There's no one else. It's us. Elders Rising is meant to, to, to stir the hearts of those, specifically the elders of the church. But any man... Who is going to 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 have that desire for freedom and that desire to defend our constitution and to pr 
preserve our way of life is encouraged and invited to 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 rise up and to say something to, to be free it's to, to to live freely and that's that's what what it's about we have to be the cavalry because there's not if we wait for someone else to do it we're going to put our kids into chains yeah if not us who if not now when yep we're at a we're at a crossroads we're at a turning point as far as our our posterity's future and with our form of government and ultimately like we discussed earlier we know that outcome we know what's going to happen but as we've been told my entire life you know the lord sent choice spirits that were raised up for the purpose of establishing this country and he sent choice spirits that were raised up in a and chosen for this time to ensure that it survives. Yeah. Yeah. And what you're saying, one less than one half of one percent are here in the United States at this time. You know, some of us it may be um, it may be just coincidence or dumb luck that some of us are here. Others others of us are here for a specific purpose. Yep. And we're, it's to uphold and defend the Constitution and ensure that it passes on to our posterity. Um, you know, I think when we do these, I think about Alma chapter 60 a lot in that, or, yeah, chapter 60. And that's been a source of inspiration for us to start. Um, you know, and I, the Alma chapter 60 was as much written to us as it was to Pahoran. Um, such as the part where, you know, if you're, if, if, you know, the freedom of your little ones doesn't stir you, then the, the sort of justice doth hang over you, and that is very much to us. Yeah. If, if we let freedom die, we too are held accountable to that, especially when we have, we have the tools and the knowledge to do these things. We have a peaceful means, you know, we can protest, we have the freedom of speech, we can we can write our representatives and say, look, this is how I feel about this, and this is what should happen, this is how you need to vote. And when all else fails, we're left with a right to bear arms to to force the correction to, to make the shit to, the duty to, to force to the restoration the duty we have to, to change it yeah. and and one of the things i keep hearing people say about um a coming war is the second revolution and every time i hear somebody say that because it's it's coming i i hope it doesn't because it's i've seen it's more good, i've done yeah. it it's not cool but, you know, I hear people say the second revolution when really it, it, it shouldn't be considered a second revolution. It should be considered a war of restoration when that, when that time comes. Because we have, the, the, you know, the perfect form of government. We have God's form of government of man on earth, and we don't need to revolutionize it. We need to restore it. Restore it. And we need to do everything in our power to do it peacefully. Because you can't just jump to violence because then you're no better than than those that have you know pushed you to that point. That's true. And violence should always be your last resort anyway. But anybody who does that says that violence is never never solves anything is a damn liar. Yeah. Because violence solves everything. They've obviously <laughs> never been in a fist fight. <laughs> Yeah. That means they're a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> and you shouldn't listen Force. to pussies. <laughs> take, take the bully down at bigger too. Yeah. Force. <laughs> like Properly yell, apply. If, if you're like not, I yell that to you. <laughs> if you're not willing to you <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> Stop <laughs> listening to pussies. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Yeah, anyway, if, if you're, you're not, if willing, you're not to, willing to use violence, you will always be beholden to somebody who is. Yeah. 
That's yep. just a law of nature. Yep. Well, and, and I think it was Joseph Smith that said that uh, any man who is not willing to fight for his wife and children is a coward. Absolutely. You know? And, Josh. well, yes, it should not be our, our first option. It's always got to be an option. Well, we're ready. We've always got to be ready, ready, willing, and able. Yes. Absolutely. And we were at in, in DNC because we always hear about, uh, we did this a couple weeks ago, we always hear about turn the other cheek. Um, but nobody ever talks about the, you know, the other part, the other the flip side of that. Um, yes, the Lord tells us to turn the other cheek, and if we do, we, um, we will be blessed. But he's also said that if they keep abusing you, if if you if you're not guilty of the first offense yeah um it says if you do decide to do something you are justified yep. but when it comes to our family and especially our children we are encouraged to do something well if you allow something knowingly to happen to your children i in my opinion you one you you've lost your right to raise your children too, you need to be taken out and horse whipped. You know, because uh, if you don't do it, somebody will. Somebody will have to step up and do something. And that other person probably is not going to have the best interest per se of your child at heart. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yes, I'm a big believer in there being armed guards in in our in our schools. But I think it needs to be the parents and grandparents of the children that are there because they've got skin in the game. They're not going to run and hide. They're not going to wait for somebody else to, to step up and save their kids. They're going to be the ones that step up there and does it themselves. And I will, every day of the week, stand between my child and evil. But that's me. There are some people who are not so inclined. There are some people who don't have that, that uh, ability. Those are the people that think that violence doesn't solve the problem. Yeah, well, or can't solve a problem. Uh, occasionally, you know, when when something bad happens, they call the good guys with the guns, and that's they're the ones that solve the problem for you. Mm -hmm. And the proper application of it's just, violence. It's just another. <laughs> I like that the proper application of violence. But it's just another example of of uh, masculinity. No, um, it is. Well, yes. It's another example of how we're being conditioned to think differently. Yep. That's that's actually. Do you mind if I go? Mind if I rant for a bit? Yeah. Okay. That's that's exactly <laughs> like we were talking about it before. I know you said yes, and that would mean that you don't want me to rant, but I'm going to do it anyways. But um, we were talking about this before, and this is a topic that I have literally for the last literal year or so. Been, brought up a bunch and I, I think about a lot I, I, you I like free porn I think no that's <laughs> stupid oh. all porns gay porn <laughs> but um the anyways when we're ta when we're fundamentally taught to change the way we think <laughs> so if you think about um, the the two words nice and kind niceness is the when you avoid conflict kindness is when you do what's good for other people they're very similar in fact, when you look up synonyms, if you if you look up what are the synonyms of nice, you will find the word kind as a synonym for nice. If you go and, and do the reciprocal search, look up what are the synonyms for kind, you will not find the word nice for kind. Kind, nice is not a synonym of kind because nice is about avoiding conflict. Kind is about doing what's best for someone else. When you do what, yeah, when you do what's best for someone else. Sometimes that is whipping them, telling like them, Christ did. Or telling them they're stupid. Or telling them they're stupid. <laughs> if you look at the gospel, kindness is a virtue. Niceness has no place in the gospel. Well, what? It's it's it, it, it has a place in society. It's it's there are times where you need to be nice, but it is not a virtue in, on a on a theological level. Kindness has been. Um, subverted with niceness in Christianity. Yep. That's not just in the church, in, in our church, but in all of Christianity. They've 
our, our culture has made it so make sure you're nice be nice there's there's this idea that you have to be nice and because that people don't understand conflict they don't understand when it's the right time to fight and they don't understand how to fight and and it's it's one of those things that if we don't if we don't fix in our culture we're we're going to be suffer we're going to continue to suffer from it because the the sides the powers of evil are using this this weakness in our understanding of of kindness versus niceness to castrate our efforts they're using it to make it so that we don't know how to defend what is true and what is right you can't it, it's not nice to tell a person that homosexual that gay marriage is not good it's not nice to tell a, a person that transgenderism is a mental illness that's not nice but it is kind yeah it's the hard truth but what, what was one of the first things because that's what we talked about in our first first episode was kindness and, and niceness and what did what did we come to the conclusion of when we looked up and read the definitions nice is a description kindness is an action yes the flip side of it um, I and I use this because this is a, an, an example I use in my in my concealed carry classes um, the the bad people look at not, not niceness or that they look at yeah niceness sorry politeness those kinds of things as a weakness a weakness to be exploited a weakness to be used and uh, so if they can distract you they will uh, because that allows them to perpetrate their designs on you and you don't even recognize what's happening um, and one of them being okay uh, there was a video of a uh, mostly empty parking lot at a, at a grocery store and you don't you never see the woman other than she's on the far side of her car loading stuff into up into the back seat of her car before she gets in as she's getting in two guys walk out of the grocery store together and they they separate one goes to the rear end of her car and the other one goes around the front end and he steps up and he says do you are you done with the cart can I take the cart back into the store for you oh well thank you sure yeah so he takes the cart and he walks it back into the store well he was distracting her so that the guy in the rear could just get into the car and she didn't notice it he takes the cart back in he comes back to the car he gets into her car and drives it off and you never see the woman again because she mistook kindness and niceness politeness and all that kind of stuff for weakness <laughs> and uh, they use they use uh, something that she uh, something good from her oh, against, against her. her yep which yep. leads me to a good to a, a tip if anybody ever gets into your car shoot them well <laughs> they're sorry, gonna have the advantage yep but you can always flip the coin if somebody gets into your car and tells you to drive somewhere, don't ever go where they're telling you to go. You hit the closest thing Run right possible. In. Hit the light post, run into to another car that's parked. Hopefully there's nobody in it. But Hopefully it's a cop car. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> but that, that's just the thing. If somebody hops in your vehicle and tells you to go somewhere, under no circumstances ever go where they tell you to go. Comply. Or if they try to force you out of the driver's seat, freaking hit that gas and ram it into whatever because worst case scenario the accident kills you they were going to kill you anyway but it's infinitely better than you know whatever destiny they have in mind, <laughs> they have in mind. plus it's your final say you choose to go out fighting go out fighting yep it also creates a scene so that if if they do end up hurting you or damaging you or something they can't further hurt your family or hurt because there's 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 this big scene and there's there's some kind of stopper there's some kind of that the, you, you, your your person can't be leveraged as much against your own your loved ones yep choose to fight when it comes down to it just choose to fight well and that's that's one of the things i, I try to teach my kids you know that yeah in fact I'm, I'm gonna be having a young women's self-defense thing 
a week or two before that gun class. Uh, just those kinds of things just help, help them to understand the difference between politeness, weakness, um, and the strength that comes from... <laughs> That's why I left that window open. I thought she might come out. Awesome dismount, dog. You, you, you tired of being alone? I knew she might get cold, though. That's why I put her in there. Yeah. Good girl. But, uh, you know, we've got to do something. We, 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 we've got to be willing to stand between the evil and the innocent. And I think that's what we're, I think that's what you guys are talking about. Yeah. You know, it, it could be, it could be very uncomfortable, could be dangerous, could be deadly. But what is it going to do for, what is it going to mean to uh, our families and our posterity if we, if we just roll over and, and let it happen? I don't, I don't want to be uh, another Neville Chamberlain. You know, I don't want to be a victim. Is, is is peace is peace so precious as to be worth living and dying in chains? I don't think so. I'm not Patrick Henry, but <laughs> <laughs> dying's not the worst thing. Nope, there are worse things than dying. My grandfather helped liberate several concentration camps when he went with Patton and uh, yeah there are worse things than dying by far being forced to watch your children or your wife endure torture or I, I would rather be dead and if it comes down to that then I probably already am yeah <laughs> Be the type of person that they'll have to kill to shut up. Those are the ones that are remembered. Not the meek, timid souls that went quietly into the night. To quote the old cowboy way, go out with your boots on. Damn straight. One of the things that I read in um, the Gulag Archipelago, I forget what you call it. I forget the name exactly. No, that's it. Okay. You're the only other person I've ever met that's read that. <laughs> I've, I've, I haven't finished. There's, there's like three volumes. Yes, it's I've read book. most of the way it's through the volume. first volume. So, but anyways, these these people, these um these this it's about the Russians that were um that were basically enslaving their own people. They were they were, they they had these 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 camps and they had quotas. They had to get enough people to. To show that they were being productive or whatever, you know, thanks to communism, they had to make sure that they bureaucracy. You, you, well, well, here's the thing: if you can, if you can enslave, what was it like a, a fifth of the population? It keeps the other po rest of the population in line, and that's what they were doing. Kill one and terrorize ten thousand, and you you accomplished your aim. The thing that would terrify these people that were these these guys that were torturing people is these old ladies who would not submit to what they had. <laughs> these old ladies are like, you can do whatever you want to me. I'm not going to sign your paper. I'm not going give to you, give you the confession that you want because I know I didn't do the thing that you're accusing me of. And they didn't know how to do with them. They, they, the paperwork, the bureaucracy was such that if they ended up doing these, they, they would do these atrocious, atrocious things to people. They would leave them in six inches of water for months. They wouldn't feed them. They'd, um, they did they wouldn't let them sleep. They had a thing called the secret brand where they would brand them oh, up yeah. their rectum. They would, they, they, they just terrible, terrible things. Evil, evil people. And they were justified in doing it when the person was guilty. And so they had to torture you until you would you sign the thing confessing that you were guilty and then they would kill you. Yep. That was the game. These women that, like there was these, he talks about these old grannies that were like, you can't do anything to me. I'm not guilty. I'm not going to sign it. They couldn't do anything to them that would make them change their mind. And they had to kill them, torture, torture them to death. And when they didn't have the right paperwork showing that the people didn't confess, they would get in trouble. Yeah, they were, they were the next on the line. Yeah. And so it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you, in a very real sense, being honest and true and standing up for what you believe it, it empowers you. It gives you the power because you are standing on God's side. You're being. You're standing for what's true, and nothing, nothing can do. 
you, the, Satan can't, what, what can't can make you, do, you... What can you do to me? You can kill me. That's all you can do. Exactly. And it comes back to that agency thing. We're going on for a long time. Yep, I gotta go. Okay. Yeah, I gotta... Two and a half hours. Oh, wow. Good job, Fred. You and your damn rats. <laughs> this Aldo's Rising, episode 21. Thank you for coming today. Be good, do good, speak the truth. Okay, see you guys. Bye.